What if you could ride a beam of light? What would you see? Would time stop? Would space vanish? These were not questions from science fiction, but from a young man working in a patent office. Albert Einstein. A name that would become synonymous with genius. With wonder. With the very laws that govern the universe. But before the Nobel Prizes, before the fame, before E equals MC squared became the most iconic equation in history, there was silence, frustration, and a mind that refused to stop thinking. In 1905, he unleashed a storm of ideas that shattered the foundations of classical physics. He explained how light behaves like particles, how molecules move, how time and space are not fixed, but relative. His thought experiments, simple in form, radical in implication, changed the way we see everything, from the orbit of planets to the ticking of your GPS. But who was this man? What shaped his imagination? Why did he, more than anyone, dare to ask the impossible? This is not just the story of a physicist. It's the story of a rebel, a refugee, a philosopher, and a legend. Albert Einstein was born on March 14, 1879, in the quiet German city of Ulm. The birth was unremarkable, but the child was not. His parents, Hermann and Pauline, soon noticed something strange. He was slow to speak. For years, he uttered hardly a word. Some feared he was different. They were right, just not in the way anyone imagined. One day, his father showed him a simple compass. The needle, trembling toward the north, seemed like magic. But to Albert, it was a mystery demanding an answer. This wasn't just curiosity. It was the beginning of a lifelong obsession to understand the invisible forces behind the visible world. The Einsteins later moved to Munich, where Albert attended the Luttpold Gymnasium. There, he excelled in mathematics, but clashed with the rigid schooling system. He was unimpressed by rote memorization. Teachers called him rebellious. One even told him he'd never amount to anything. But Albert wasn't lazy. He was independent. He loved music, especially Mozart. And he taught himself geometry at 12. At 15, disillusioned with school and disturbed by growing nationalism in Germany, he left. Alone. No diploma. No plan. He found refuge in Switzerland, where ideas, not obedience, mattered more. At the Argau Cantonal School, teachers encouraged critical thought. It was the change he needed. In 1896, he enrolled at the prestigious Swiss Federal Polytechnic in Zurich. There, he studied physics and met someone who would shape both his life and his heart, Mileva Merrick. Mileva was brilliant, determined, one of the few women in science. Their bond grew over shared ideas and soon, shared dreams. But while his mind soared, his grades were inconsistent. Professors were unimpressed. And after graduation, no university would hire him. So the young Einstein, jobless, idealistic, and now a father, took work at the Swiss patent office in Bern. It was mundane, mechanical, but it gave him time and silence. It was there, between stacks of patent files, that Albert Einstein began to change the universe. It was 1905. Albert Einstein was 26 years old. He had no doctorate, no university position, and worked full-time as a patent clerk in Bern, Switzerland. But while the world overlooked him, he was quietly rewriting the rules of reality. In that single year, Einstein published not one, not two, but four scientific papers that would shatter the foundations of classical physics. It would later be called his Annus Mirabilis, his miracle year. The first paper explained how light wasn't just a wave, it could behave like a stream of particles, or quanta. This idea challenged over a century of accepted theory and laid the foundation for what would become quantum mechanics. Years later, this is the work that earned him the Nobel Prize in physics, not relativity, but light. In his second paper, Einstein offered mathematical proof that tiny particles suspended in liquid moved because of invisible molecular collisions. It was the first convincing evidence that atoms, once considered hypothetical, were real. Then came the third paper, the one that would make him a legend. In special relativity, Einstein argued that time and space were not absolute. They changed depending on how fast you moved. Time slows down. Length contracts. And simultaneity? It disappears. No experiment had ever shown this. But Einstein saw it in his mind. And then, in just a few lines, he wrote the most famous equation in history. E equals mc squared. Energy and mass are interchangeable. A small amount of mass could unleash enormous energy, a concept that would later shape the nuclear age. In the span of just months, Einstein had reinvented light, matter, motion, space, time, and energy. Without a lab, without a grant, without a single assistant, he worked late into the night, with baby Hans Albert asleep in the next room, and Maleva supporting him in quiet resilience. But the world wasn't ready, not yet. At first, his papers were largely ignored. But soon, physicists across Europe began to take notice. Einstein had not just answered questions, he had asked new ones. In 1905, Albert Einstein was a name few had heard. But by the time the world caught up, he would become the voice of a new scientific era. By the end of the 1900s, Einstein had revolutionized physics, but he still worked at the edge of the academic world. In 1909, that changed. He was offered a professorship in Zurich, then Prague, then Berlin. By 1914, he had become a professor at the Prussian Academy of Sciences in Berlin, one of the most prestigious institutions in Europe. There, he tackled his next great challenge, completing the theory of gravity. For centuries, 
Isaac Newton's laws described how objects attracted one another, but they didn't explain why. Einstein had a different vision, that mass bends space and time itself. In 1915, after years of effort, he unveiled his masterpiece, the general theory of relativity. His theory predicted something bold, that light would bend near massive objects, like the sun. But it was just that, a prediction. Then came a total solar eclipse in 1919, a rare moment when stars could be seen close to the sun. British astronomer Sir Arthur Eddington led an expedition to test Einstein's theory. The result? The starlight bent, exactly as Einstein had predicted. Einstein was right. And overnight, the world knew his name. Lights all ask you in the heavens, declared the New York Times. He wasn't just a physicist anymore. He was a global icon. But fame brought complications. Einstein became a reluctant celebrity, hounded by reporters, adored by students, and asked to weigh in on everything from world peace to world politics. He signed autographs, posed for photos, spoke at universities across the globe. Yet even as he became the face of science, Einstein remained deeply private, often retreating to music, solitude, or sailing to escape the spotlight. By the 1920s, Albert Einstein had become more than a man. He was a symbol of intellect, of discovery, and of the boundless power of human thought. But while the world celebrated him, darker clouds were forming in Europe. And once again, Einstein would find himself caught between science and history. While Albert Einstein was reshaping science, his personal life was unraveling, tangled in love, ambition, and quiet sorrow. At the center of that story was Maleva Marek, a brilliant Serbian physicist and Einstein's first wife. They met as classmates in Zurich, both outsiders, both dreamers. Their early years were filled with shared ideas, long walks, and whispered theories. In 1902, before they married, Maleva gave birth to their first child, a daughter named Lizer. The details of her fate remain a mystery. Some say she died young. Others believe she was given up for adoption. Albert and Maleva married in 1903. They had two sons, Hans Albert, who became a respected engineer, and Edward, who showed early brilliance but later suffered from schizophrenia. But Einstein's growing fame brought growing distance. Long hours of work, frequent travel, and an emotional aloofness strained the marriage. In 1914, as Europe slid toward war, Albert moved to Berlin, alone. He and Maleva never lived together again. They divorced in 1919. As part of the settlement, Einstein promised to give her the prize money if he ever won a Nobel. Two years later, he did. Later that same year, he married Elsa Lowenthal, his cousin and longtime companion. She brought stability, but never the intellectual partnership he once had with Maleva. His relationship with his children remained distant. Hans Albert would eventually move to the United States. Edward, institutionalized in Zurich, received letters filled with warmth, but few visits. Einstein's private pain was kept quiet, hidden behind equations and modest smiles. He once wrote, What a sad species we are, so clever, and yet so incapable of happiness. Albert Einstein changed how we understand the universe. But he never quite solved the equation of the human heart. By the early 1930s, Albert Einstein was not just the most famous scientist in the world, he was also a symbol of reason, freedom, and progress. But in Germany, another kind of symbol was rising. The swastika. Einstein, a pacifist and a Jew, became a target of hatred. His theories were denounced as Jewish physics. His home was raided. His books were burned. In 1933, while lecturing in the US, he made a fateful decision. He would never return to Germany. Instead, he renounced his citizenship and began a new life in exile. Einstein accepted a position at the newly formed Institute for Advanced Study in Princeton, New Jersey, a haven for intellectuals fleeing fascism. There, he found peace, but never complacency. He became an American citizen in 1940, but he never stopped being a global citizen, a voice for the oppressed, the exiled, and the silenced. Einstein spoke loudly and often against racism, against nationalism, and against the growing danger of authoritarianism. He admired America's freedoms, but condemned its hypocrisy. He joined the NAACP, corresponded with W.B. Dubois, called racism America's worst disease. To Einstein, science was sacred, but silence, unforgivable. He had escaped tyranny, but he knew the world was on the brink of something even more terrifying, something his own theories had helped unleash. In August 1939, as the world teetered on the edge of war, Albert Einstein signed a letter to President Franklin D. Roosevelt. It warned that Nazi Germany might be building an atomic bomb and urged the United States to act first. The letter was drafted by physicist Leo Szilard, but it carried Einstein's authority. It worked. The U.S. launched the Manhattan Project, the top-secret effort to develop nuclear weapons. Six years later, Hiroshima and Nagasaki were gone. The world had entered the nuclear age. Einstein had not worked on the bomb. He wasn't even consulted. But he felt the weight of his signature. He was horrified, grief-stricken, and filled with regret. For the rest of his life, Einstein became a tireless advocate for nuclear disarmament and for global unity. He co-founded the Emergency Committee of Atomic Scientists, warned against the arms race, and spoke of the need for a world government to prevent annihilation. His plea was simple, mankind must give up war. In helping stop a tyrant, Einstein had opened Pandora's box, and he spent the rest of his life trying to close it. Because for all his equations, what mattered most to him was human life.
Even as the world crowned him a genius, Albert Einstein remained unsatisfied. His mind, always restless, returned to a problem that had haunted him since his youth, the dream of unifying nature's loss. He called it the unified field theory, an attempt to explain all physical forces in a single elegant framework. But as the world moved toward quantum mechanics, Einstein turned away. He couldn't accept the universe built on chance. God does not play dice with the universe. He challenged quantum theory, debated with Niels Bohr, but the tide had turned. In his final years, Einstein lived simply. He refused surgery when diagnosed with an abdominal aneurysm, saying, I want to go when I want. It is tasteless to prolong life artificially. He continued writing, reading, walking, and quietly mentoring younger scientists. On April 18, 1955, at the age of 76, Albert Einstein passed away in Princeton Hospital. He left behind no fortune, no grand estate, just notebooks, letters, and a brain that was secretly removed during autopsy, later studied in hopes of decoding genius. But Einstein's real legacy wasn't in his brain. It was in his boldness, his curiosity, his refusal to accept the limits of knowledge. He once said, I want to know God's thoughts, the rest are details. And though he never found all the answers, he taught the world how to ask the right questions. Decades after his death, Albert Einstein remains more than a historical figure. He's a symbol of intellect, of imagination, of human potential. His theories reshaped physics, from black holes and gravitational waves to GPS satellites and atomic clocks. His face, wild-haired and wide-eyed, became an icon of genius. But behind the image was a man who valued humility over fame and questions over certainty. He was named Time Magazine's Person of the Century in 1999, not for a single discovery, but for showing us a new way to see the world. Yet his greatest legacy may be his belief in the power of thought. The simple idea that even one curious mind, sitting alone with a pencil, can change the course of history. Imagination is more important than knowledge. For knowledge is limited, but imagination encircles the world. Albert Einstein, he taught us that the universe was not a fixed machine, but a flexible mystery. And he reminded us that in the heart of science is wonder. Thank you for watching Real Life Legends. If you enjoyed this journey into the life of Albert Einstein, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell for more inspiring stories. Check out our other biographies and keep exploring the minds that shaped our world.